Well, I'm here with Maya, and this is Maya's roadmap to success. This is a bully stick. We're gonna use this to keep Maya in the shot. She's gonna to try to steal it from me and go away. Um, all right, so basically uh, Maya is, her problem is she does not like uh, other dogs and uh, she barks at them. Now, um, one of the first things we talked about was a little bit of maintenance. Um, behind the camera here, we have some windows that face out on the, uh, onto the street and the house is a little bit higher than the street. For dogs, a uh, height, this camera angle actually illustrates a little bit, uh, matters. So for dogs, the higher they are, the more status uh, they have. So Maya already feels kind of in a leadership position when she's looking out this window. Um, and then dogs learn through association, repetition, and good timing. So basically, you have two seconds to correct or reward a dog for them to make that connection. Now, association is what's at play here. So let's say that Maya hears a dog walking by the front of the house and she races up to the windows behind the camera and she goes and starts barking at the dog. Hey, St. Bernard, I can see you out there. What, what are you doing? This is Maya, you're, you're in the middle of my yard. Are you crazy? That's right, Keith, and you're almost out of my yard. That's right, and don't come back. Every time that happens, Maya thinks that that dog was gonna invade the house, but for her due diligence, she kept that dog from invading the house. And because when she barked, the dog appeared to go away. She doesn't realize the dog is passing by the front of the house, it's gonna leave no matter what. And as a result of that, she's practicing barking at other dogs. So what I look at is kind of the total, uh, the total approach and how can we kind of make all sorts of adjustments to help her practice not doing anything that's related to her problem, in this case, reacting to other dogs. So I would cover up the bottom windows in this room and raise the shades up a little bit so we get the benefit of the light. We're taller, we can still see out. When she hears a dog and goes to the window and barks, she can't see that they leave, so she doesn't get the validation that her barking made them leave. After a while, she'll stop barking at stuff outside the house, or at least not as much. Uh, now, we also talked about uh, <laughs> rules and structure. Uh, well, actually, we talked about stimulation and exercise. Uh, Maya has a licking habit. She likes to lick her guardian. She likes to lick the floor. She likes to chew on bully sticks. That's normal. But um, licking can be a sign of boredom. And I think in her case, she gets walked when the weather's nice. But being a chihuahua, she doesn't have the best circulation in her legs. And being in Nebraska, none of us want to really walk our dogs. So I think she's probably a little under uh, under-exercised and under-stimulated. We think of just exercise exclusively, but dogs can also be mentally stimulated. So I'd like the guardian to uh, start using Kongs. You can freeze those. Um, lick mats, um, and lick mats would be something to do when guests are around, or if she goes over to uh, her friend's house, uh, Riley's house, um, getting uh, both dogs practiced at having a lick mat separate from the other dogs, and then eventually having her go to Riley's house without Riley being there. Maybe Riley's gone on a walk having her go in there for a couple times and she just gets to walk around and sniff and have a good time. And then she leaves before Riley comes back home. Do that a couple times and do the scent games, which is another, you can Google scent games. There's a great way to burn energy by having a dog use its nose. So uh, maybe you, you uh, throw treats around. So you throw a treat and say, you know, find it. And she goes over and licks it up. And eventually you say, uh, after, you know, you do that to start off with by throwing the treats. Then eventually you have maybe five or 10 treats in the room and then Maya comes in the room and we say, find it. She uses her nose to find them. We preoccupied her, we're burning her energy and creating a positive association in the apartment, doing this without Riley being there. Um, and so once she's comfortable and, and relaxed and practice of being there, then uh, I'd like the guardians to actually start walking the dogs together. And you're doing this, we'd like the dogs to be kind of uh, parallel to each other. So neither the dog is in front or behind. And you might have to be on opposite sides of the street. We don't want either dog to be reacting or cowering. Riley is uh, not the most uh, uh, confident dog around Maya. And so the idea is uh, we get them practice. We want to build up positive associations. So walking dogs together is a great way to do that because they're moving forward literally. There's a lot of distractions and uh, so they don't feel the pressure that, uh, that comes with being inside. Also, uh, it's territorial pissings. It's Riley's place, so she comes over. She wants to kind of throw her elbows, and Riley's a little insecure. There's a dog here. So when she comes over, she goes around the house and sniffs around, and then you guys leave, and then Riley comes back in. Riley's going to go around and sniff the house and be able to get a little bit of Maya scent without the presence of Maya. That might be a low enough level of stimulus for him to actually appreciate or start doing a positive association. Sometimes I use a, a, the smell of another dog or the sight of another dog. That's kind of a little bit of what we did in the video above with the uh, engage, disengage. So I would maybe get uh, Riley, uh, have Riley's guardian take a washcloth and rub it, especially between his back shoulder blades, but rub it all over the dog and then flip it over, rub it all over the dog. For, spend about like a minute for each side and then put it in a Ziploc bag, give it to the guardian. The guardian brings it home. And then the guardian has, let's say that this is the washcloth. I wash my hands first. This is a washcloth with Riley's scent on it. In this hand, I have treats. I have them behind my back. 
I hold it out to the, can to the dog, the dog sniffs it. I might say, Riley, and Maya comes over and sniffs it, then I take it away and I give her a treat. And then I repeat this, so you're seeing my hands are akimbo. They're never both in front at the same time. And so what we're just saying is sniffing Riley gets you a treat. We're building a positive association with Riley. And you can do the same thing for, with my ascent to Riley. And so eventually now the smell of the other dog is a positive. Then we can actually start walking them together at first far enough for what part, but closer and closer. We're building up positive associations. And it's always uh, best to have a shorter visit that is successful than a longer visit that ends up one of the dogs gets cranky or we push too far and then they bark, that's the freshest memory engram. Whenever you're doing dog trainer behavior, you always wanna end on a positive. So if you get to the zenith and it goes really well, stop at that point, stop, it'd be kind of like Georgia Costanza in that Seinfeld, always end on a good note. Um, okay, um, let me see. Uh, so I'd like the guardian to get a, a lick mat, uh, start using Kong's fill of peanut butter, feed the dog out of a snuffle mat, get about four or five more, uh, probably four more uh, ball sort of treats. And they don't have to be balls. I have one that looks like a dumbbell. So the food comes out of the end. The dog has to lift it end over end to get a couple pieces of kibble to come out. There's a lot of ball ones out there, but I have one that's a pyramid, one that's like, there are a lot of puzzles. They have to move sliders and there's little depressions and there's some, some kibble under there. The more that she works for her food, that's gonna boost her confidence. It's draining of energy. It slows her down and gives her something to do. So there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, we'd also like to do, um, let me see, what else do we talk about? Um, training. So uh, trying to uh, spend a little two minute training session three or four times a day is a great way to help her respect a little bit more, see the human acting more like a leader, have her uh, acquire a new skill, which will boost her self-esteem and confidence. Um, and then uh, it, gives, it gives you different things you can do to redirect her. So we worked a little bit on teaching her to roll over by just shaping. So we have her first turning her head and for, turn her head. And then eventually the next step is you have her turn her head and then shrug, shrug her shoulder and make sure you go the direction she likes to circle on. Um, and then eventually you get her to kind of hang up there further and further. And I probably would actually look and go to YouTube and just look up how to teach my dog to play dead and make sure that it's using the same sort of technique, positive reinforcement only. And eventually you have the dog lay on its side and you wait a second and you give it a treat and then a couple seconds, then eventually say bang and then roll it over inside. And then you go bang and the dog rolls over inside and plays dead. Um, once you've achieved that trick, then you could teach her how to roll over. That's kind of culminating rolling over all the way. That's why it's better to teach bang first. Um, it's kind of really shaping by teaching different, uh, uh, different tricks. Um, and then try to teach her other things, you know, work on the leave it command uh, or cue. Um, look for other things. Teach her that sit pretty or attention that I showed you. Um, teach her to do a middle so she comes up in between your legs and you give her a treat. Teach her to do a play bow where she puts her chest down on the ground, her butt up in the air. Um, these are all easy things to do and I have videos so if you forget, uh, you want questions on how to do these, let me know and I'm happy to share them with you. But the idea is to give her, when dogs know about 10 commands, they reach a certain level of confidence. And it also gives you other things you can do to, uh, to distract them. And they're kind of practicing listening to you. So um, Maya, I think, needs more stimulation and exercise throughout the day. So if she gets up in the morning, goes out and potties, comes in and eats out of the snuffle mat while the guardian is uh, showering, then uh, maybe after that, we play a little tug game for about a minute or two. And then uh, the guardian goes to work a little bit. And then a couple hours later, she gets a lick mat. A couple hours later, she eats a snack out of a ball. A couple hours later, we play some scent games. A couple hours later, we do a little bit of training again. A couple hours later, we go for a little mini walk. So all in, we're like maybe 15 minutes worth of actual training or 20 minutes worth of training and stimulation. But sprinkling them throughout the day is going to be much more impactful. We also talked about the importance of rules. Right now, Maya has no rules. She doesn't have much motivation to listen to her guardians because she gets whatever she wants um, just by taking it or just because she's such a cute looking dog. So um, uh, some of the rules I would suggest, we uh, would really, uh, if the guardian can try to convince mom that not to feed Maya food from the table. Dogs know they shouldn't be within seven feet of someone who has a high value item. So it's a natural rule they have and we feed them from the table that encourages them to break that rule. The way that a dog asks for something is they invade space and just wait there for it, for you either to correct and say, I don't like that, or to reward them. Right now, the dog is being rewarded for invading space and that's kind of contributing to some of these other things. So my rules are not being allowed within seven feet of anybody who's eating, whether it's a dinner table or a couch or wherever else, not being allowed in the kitchen where we're preparing food. Um, uh, and I also like to use a lot of pre-max. Pre-max means that a less desirable behavior earns to be a more desirable behavior. Maya loves jumping in her guardian's lap. So what I'd like her to start doing is when she sees Maya's running over to her, say sit before Maya gets her. So Maya sits, then, uh, then we invite her up. If Maya sits within two seconds of the first and only time you say it, the more you say it, the less you need it. 
So say sit once, and the dog sits, then we invite and you get the privilege of the lap. If you, if you uh, don't sit, then, my, then Maya's guardian shows, I have other things that I could do. And it doesn't bother me. I'm not gonna correct you or get upset or punish you, but I've all moved on to other things. The dog is the one that's missing out. After a while, Maya will come over and start sitting to prepay for the attention. Um, so um, we also talked about the leash. The leash is a negative. Maya doesn't like the leash. So what again, I would do kind of the same sort of thing that I showed with the scent. So I have the leash bundled up here and a bunch of treats in this hand. Show her you have the treat, uh, the leash. As soon as she looks at it, take it away and give her a treat. And eventually, that's the first stage. All she has to do is look at it. Eventually, then you hold it up and she kind of leans towards it. You take it away and give her a treat. Then eventually, and this might be several practices, so then you hold it out and she touches her nose to it and we give it a treat. Then you kind of dangle the leash so it kind of looks more like it's going to be when you're attaching. And then she gets the leash, put it back up, dangle it again. And eventually, you start holding a little bit towards her, pull it away, give her a treat. Now, if you pull it towards her and she backs away, that means that this movement was too much. So if I go all the way here and she turns away, the next time I might pull back, I don't treat for that. This time I would just go like this and then give her a treat. And then this and give her a treat. And then work our way back up. Remember, always step, uh, go back a step or a half step or a full step or several steps until you can get a level the dog can achieve. Practice at that level, then gradually try to work back to where you were. Um, and it's gonna be a process. It's gonna take uh, a lot of repetitions. That's life. So don't worry about trying to train or fix your dog in one session. We want to kind of come up with a holistic approach. And if we're doing training, I would recommend trying to do training maybe two or three times a day. It's a nice way to step away from your work and kind of refocus your energy. Um, and it's going to boost, her, uh, boost Maya's confidence and also give you that redirection and uh, that stimulation that she needs. Um, let me see. So Premax, you can do that for getting on my lap. Um, if we have the bait fenced in gate, when you come home, the guardian sets up an X pen when she leaves. So when you come back home, is there a door in it or do you, is it just a barricade? So when you come home, tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, then sit down on the couch out in this room and look at your phone. She protests and whines. That's okay. I'm not going to correct you. Does, that sort of thing doesn't get my attention. Remember, good attention, bad attention, same thing. So, uh, and then uh, wait a minute and then go back over and say sit. As soon as she sits, open the door and let her out. And if she doesn't sit, then I walk away and sit down for two minutes. Next time I sit down for four minutes, eight minutes, 16, I keep double length of time. Now, once you get to the point where you say sit, she sits right away, then we could also start elongating it. So I tell her to sit, and then I reach a little bit for the handle. She gets up, I pull back, tell her to sit. She sits, I reach a little bit shorter, and then give her a treat, and then reach a little bit more, give her a treat. So we're rewarding her for staying in that sitting position. And eventually, it's a point where you can uh, touch the handle, and she's staying in a sit, then eventually, and you give her a treat. And then eventually, you jiggle the handle. At first, very light jiggle, then a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier, and eventually it's like the wall going to come down, and she's sitting there quietly because after that she gets a treat. And so you're saying if you want to come out, you got to be under control, you have to be calm, you have to sit. And at first, uh, you know, and maybe at first, as soon as she sits, I open the door even if she gets back up. But gradually I work up to the stages I just talked about so I can reach for it, and the dog stays in the sit. Eventually, the point where you open the door wide, and she stays waiting for permission to come out. She needs to practice some self restraint and self control. That's what will help her not charging and lunging at the other dogs, but we have to do it at small activities that she can do it. So we look, so look for your day-to-day -day routine, activities that you can do that are pretty easy for her to do, that you're gonna repeat a lot, and that'll help her develop a little bit of that self-control and also practice listening to you. We also went over, um, uh, let me see, um, uh, well, we went over a lot. Um, when you're, uh, when, uh, uh, to get her to stop pulling on leash, what I would do is, again, walk around the house. And, I could, and you do this with, really without a leash. Just walk around the house. Every time she looks at you, say, bien, her new marker word, and then hold out a treat. Wait for her, make sure she's coming to you. Then walk a couple more steps. As soon as she looks at you, bien, give her that treat. Bien, give her the treat. Walk around the house. So now she's just practicing checking in with you. That's what we call check-ins. Gets me a treat. Then you can actually put her on the leash and after you've made sure that she's comfortable with the leash. And then you walk around the house. Same thing. Now she's practicing me on the leash. And every time she looks back at my human, the human holds out a treat. The dog has to come back to us to get that treat. So she's practicing that behavior. Eventually, he practices outside. Uh, does uh, the boyfriend have an apartment or a house? No. Okay. Um, you do it at, the, at that house as well. Um, you can also go to Lowe's and Home Depot, places like that. Practice walking up, up and down aisles because there's not a lot of distractions in Lowe's. And so, again, every time she looks at you, she gets that treat. After a while, you'll notice she starts checking in with you over and over. She's not lunging and pulling on the, way, on the walks. Walking would, like I said, be a great thing to let her do. Make sure you continue letting her sniff the way the guardian is. Um, let me see, what else? Um, uh, we talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is a little bit like the pre-mac. So if she comes up to me and nudges me or paws at me or jumps up on me and she wants attention from me, she jumps up, I might just stand up. She's going to jump down. Then I sit down and I tell her to sit. If she sits, 
Then I invite her on the lap. If she doesn't sit within two seconds, I go on to other things. Remember, playing hard to get works great for dog training. So, um, so she's got to earn the privilege of getting up on your lap or getting attention from you or anybody else in the house. After a while, she'll start sitting to prepay for that attention. Make sure you reward that. Use the watchword of uh, paycheck. So if you come in the room and you see that dad's petting her and she's standing up, dad, you say, dad, excuse me, paycheck. Dad said, even if dad did it right, he stops petting. Says, Maya, sit. If Maya sits, he pets her and then says, actually, sweetheart, I asked the dog to sit. When she came in the room, uh, she stood up, but I continued petting. But thanks, I do forget to pet without a purpose. If you get in a habit, this increases the dog's respect for you as a leader. It boosts the dog's confidence because it's earning the affection. Um, it's practicing basic obedience, which helps in other areas. It also helps make your pets more valuable because you're not giving away willy-nilly. Um, I also like you practice that capturing. So I asked the guardian uh, what the dog could do to, uh, to contribute to the group or to make her happy. And she really struggled to come up with that and finally eventually men mentioned a couple things we don't want the dog to do. The more that we give our dog attention for the things we like, the more the dog will offer those behaviors. So every time you're sitting and you see the dog's walking from across the room, say, come, when you know the dog's coming to you and then pet it. You see a dog sits down and you didn't get a chance to anticipate it, just say, be in and then pet the dog. It's better to say the word before the action if you can, but if the dog just runs over to you and you're too late, just say bien and mark for the come. So um, the more, the, like I said, we reward those behaviors, the better. Um, so when she potties outside, say bien while she's potty and then give her a treat right afterwards. Is she potty trained already? Sure. But it's just a nice way to reinforce these are things that I like you doing and it makes the dog more likely to want to do those things. Um, let me see. We also uh, went over the engage, disengage game and some other... Um, I'd like you to practice, oh, uh, the bucket game. So remember when you're feeding her, hold the bucket here, uh, the uh, bowl of food. And again, I'd like you to primarily feed her out of snuffle mats if she doesn't go for a walk, because that's just going to be a way, and the treat dispensing toys, because uh, that's a way to burn energy. But if you're feeding out of a bowl, so have your bowl full of food, and you're keeping it shoulder level, and hold it up like this. As soon as Maya looks at it, then you say, bien, and take out and treat, and then I, I, I keep it, save it shoulder level, and I move it at the same uh, horizontal level, and then if she looks at it, take one another one out, do that until she stays in a sit for five movements at this level. Then I move it six inches down and I repeat that, gradually another six inches down, eventually we can put that down on the floor. We don't have to resort to any negative punishments and the dog is practicing listening to us. Um, let me see, uh, I'd also like the guardian to practice the leave it exercise. Maya likes to lick stuff on the ground and she also likes to pick stuff up, but when we were practicing just the basics of, of just dropping it, the dog was going for it. So remember, the first thing is we drop and collapse. Then, we, and as soon as the dog disengages, we mark and then give it a treat. After a while, we drop and then we cage. And then we collapse if we need to, but we cage. And then we wait for the dog to look, disengage, and then look in our direction, mark and give it a treat. Then eventually, I want to drop it. And you only drop it for about two inches. The guardian was dropping pretty high. It was, you never know where it's going to go. Pick it up in between each one. Don't drop it and keep practicing the same one. Pick it up and reset each time. And eventually, you get to the point you drop it and cage or hover, uh, hover or cage. And then you wait for the dog to look all the way up to your eyes. Then you say mark, then you mark it and give the dog a treat. So you're saying, look at me, acknowledge me, and then I'll give you the reward. She never should get the treat that's on the ground. And do some different uh, do practice in different parts of your house. Also for the basic obedience, grab 10, 50, that can be one of the things you do during the day for that two minute training session. Grab 15 tre treats, and you can use kibble since she likes kibble. Walk around their house, nothing wrong with feeding your dog its food out of making it, doing training. That's a wonderful way to feed your dog. So grab the treats, walk around the house and say, down. And remember when she goes down, don't go like this, go here and then here. Otherwise that promotes that jumping up. And then go to the next room and down. After a while you go in the room and say, and she's just immediately down on the ground. And you'll see the speed will start coming faster and faster because this is a rewardable thing. Um, and that will help with that basic obedience and everything else. And ask for sits and downs and the rest, uh, play deads and all the rest of that fun stuff. Um, let me see. Um, Trying to think, is there anything else uh, you want me to go over? Okay. Well, if you do think of something else, don't be afraid to uh, message me. Like I said, uh, you should have your phone, uh, my phone number in your phone now. So shoot me a text. I'm, I get so many emails and I don't answer phone calls if I don't recognize the number. Unfortunately, I only so many slots in my phone and I can't have 4,000 plus clients. So text me, text me a picture of Maya. Hey, I had a quick question about marking or the leave it at command or whatever it is. And I'm happy to share videos and stuff with you. Maya, come here, sweetheart. Well, this beautiful girl right here, you gotta come up here. Maya, it's like, I don't have the motivation I want. You didn't let me have the bully stick. How about this? Well, look at this beauty. This is Maya and this is Maya's roadmap to success. Remember, Everything you do trains your dog, even chihuahuas like Maya, only sometimes you mean it.